Welcome everybody back to the channel and today we're going to be covering the warrior guides. Um, this guide is going to be probably longer than the other ones as we're going to cover the different kind of builds more in depth today with the diff with the tanking builds and the DPS and a lot more PvP discussion as this is one of the primary PvP classes as well. Today we're joined as usual by my co-host Lovedy Ninja. Well, suck. <laughs> and today's special guest is Husky. Yo, what's up, guys? Okay, want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a two twenty one warrior. Uh, I've been a tank for a while now, so I know kind of how to tank bosses and what goes around those. Oh, great to have you! And today we're also joined by. A rogue who uh, stabbed him. Uh, I don't know how much he knows about warriors, but he can enlighten <laughs> us a little. <laughs> warriors are tanky. Good to know. <laughs> They're very enlightened. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off today with a general overview of the strengths and the weaknesses of the class, as always. And so what are some of those strengths? High S armor, the big HP. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty much it. <laughs> We're like the people who tank the bosses. Um, pretty much the only class that taunts and warsies to do adds and take all the damage. Yeah. Um, also, they are probably one of the easiest classes to play in this game. Incredible. Oh yeah, easiest to lick for sure. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Easiest to play, one of the, I don't know if it's hardest to master, just because all it really is, it just depends on gear. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of DPS mm -hmm. classes uh, are more like testing on what you prefer, and skills are about managing your timings and like to make sure stuff doesn't stay off cooldown too long and managing buffs. Uh, warriors are very set in their combos. And so there's a lot of practicing your combos and just, you know, not dying. Um, another big uh, strength of the warrior class is just the different weapon diversity that they have. Um, as you can choose between bludgeoning, slashing, or pierce, whatever you kind of need in this scenario, which is good. Um, what are a lot of the cons, though, of this class? Because it certainly does have some. It's got slow attack speed, uh, high damage though, but it doesn't really do a lot of damage since some of the armor that you get from it. It doesn't really give damage, it gives defense. They do get a lot of armor though. Yeah. Uh, Husky, got anything to say about that? Um, like, whereas if you're a ranger, you would, if you're going to go DPS, you like put most of your stuff into like strength. Or I mean dexterity and stuff, and our kind of all of our skills are more um, strength-wise than they are dex-wise. If you're coming from like a ranger or anything, so. Um, also, one thing I've noticed taking a lot is a lot of energy issues. They really oh, yeah. focus a lot, and another thing yep. is this class is very not customizable. It's very set in stone with best skills to use is there's really only two specific builds that both of which are very flushed out in which skills you run, how you split your points. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like the Ranger that we covered last video where the Ranger is a very preferential build and how you, how you can build it. <laughs> um, what are the stats and the attributes that we desire when we are building? Um, if you want to be a tank, uh, I'll usually go full vi full vit. Um, defense is obviously mostly strength because our skills are acquired to strength to do damage. Um, and then PvP, I usually go full vit, and then my, uh, my skills are usually, uh, damage skills or DPS skills. It's like a mix of hybrid stuff. Yep. Yeah, generally with uh, tanking, um, 
Yeah. Full. I have a little bit more dexterity on mine. Tank probably than most. I don't know. I'm running 405 dexterity. Oh, I am 815. Okay. Yeah, I'm 115. And then I'm 2,500 vet. I would say that definitely you need more dexterity the worse your druids are. That, that kind of depends on who's healing you. Yeah. So, yeah. For anyone out there, if you're in like a more comp clan or a non-dominant clan on the server, uh, you're just trying to kill EDLs and stuff, more dexterity is going to be desired because it's actually going to reduce the damage you take overall. And it will put less strain on your healers. And especially since lower end bosses don't do as much damage per hit. It doesn't matter as much. But as you start to skill up and get more into Geli, Dino, Bloodthorn. That really tests more of your health thresholds. And as they, a lot of them have mechanics where you just need the health amount or you will die. Okay, so as a DPS warrior, what kind of stats and attributes are you going to be looking for? Full strength. Full strength. Any and how much vitality generally do we need in this class? Mm. With the warrior, I feel like you can never go too much, but enough to the point where you can still damage. So, with rogues and rangers, how we said you just need enough to survive. I would put a little bit more on top of that. Yeah, just, Since the damage yeah. that you get are mainly from your skills, and they are big hitting skills. Yeah, because yeah, when you go to, like, uh, Gelly or Bloodthorn, and you die a lot, you're just not going to get the damage out put, put if you keep dying over and over again. Yeah. As mm -hmm. a DPS warrior, um, strength is not a skill that you can, or a set that you can ever really compromise much on. Like, you need to be fully committed to strength if you're ever going to take that, as hybrid warriors tend to be quite useless. Um, it is interesting, yep. too, that the DPS Warriors are one of the few classes out there that doesn't uh, ever prioritize dexterity. And so why is that? Because our skills that we use um, take strength and not dexterity. Yeah. Especially like, the only skill that we use is double attack that doesn't take strength to yeah, and do damage. Yeah, that's a guaranteed hit ability as well. And then yep. Frenzy too. It gives a lot of attack when you level it up as well. And that can generally... You do a lot. And whereas DPS classes like Rangers are mostly auto attack heavy, Rogues are split of 50-50, a lot of Warriors are more skill reliant on their doing damage and it's like 70 or 80 percent skills 20 percent autos yeah and it, like it's a mixture between 70 30 80 20. yeah and especially with the skills that scales off of your weapon ability uh and your melee ability i think it's called i forget the exact name of it. yeah melee combat skills off of your melee combat ability uh when you use skills against bosses which is not the same thing as attack um, so all in all, uh, how good are DPS warriors? Because definitely want to talk about this a little bit. We can open up with Stab's opinion on this. Jesus, no. Honestly, at end game level, DPS warriors very useless. Tanks are very uh, necessary for end game content, and uh, you have so many other classes that can just provide that DPS that DPS warriors can give. I'd rather have another shield basher at a raid than a DPS warrior. I would like to say that what Stab said is true until the point where you reach full dodge goal and a bloodthorn helmet. Because at that point you can still DPS and bash since strength increases the damage of your bash. It's not really that much though. I've seen Torture, who's gone now. He uh, he would outkill the entire clan on Gilly, sometimes even on Bloodthorn yeah. as a bash dps and a lot of that comes down to because slashing resistance on bosses is innately lower than pierce damage or their pierce resistance and so if your clan is willing to run that lure uh 
end game, like full dodgeball war DPS warriors can really start to hurt. But the key word is just dodgeball and full mm -hmm. Bloodthorn gear, where it's really more of the gear doing damage than the actual class itself. Yeah. Yeah, if you you're DPS with EDL, you're useless. I you mean, get a good deal, a you're a Dino X, and you're pretty much set. Yeah, and even like Mord Helms are kind of iffy on them. Unless you're, mm -hmm. like, running a Sun Helm or something like that. Like, either a Carnage or an Earth Helm, something like that. Yeah. It's really dependable on what kind of build you're trying to go for. Okay, so let's cover a basic rundown of the Warrior's abilities, then. We're going to start off with the Pummel ability. Best best DPS skill for the Warrior. In Just end to quick game, damage it. Yeah. This is the bread and it's butter pretty simple. of the class. It's, it's good in middle and early game. End game, when you get enough cooldowns and Bloodthorn bands that give you the pummel direct damage, it's just god tier. This ability is in the same line with uh, like Ranger's um, Sharp Shot, Rogue's Quick Strike, and those instant cast spells, the bread and butter of a class. Just mm -hmm. really solid. Mm -hmm. Once in the yeah. end game, you can get like a 25 or 30% cooldown on a pummel. Uh -huh. You can fit two pummels on one shatter. That's massive damage if you get direct damage gear for it. Yeah. And there's yeah. no shortage of direct damage gear uh, for pummel, especially as a skill, because due yeah. to the lack of variety in skills, or at least damage skills for Warrior, you got so much stuff that upgrades pummel damage. Mm hmm. So really solid. Uh, next up, we'll go to Giant Swing. Eh. I feel like I guess, that's one of the bottom tier skills. Yeah, it's decent if you're in the early game. Mid game, you should be using another skill that you could probably talk about after Giant Swing. But yeah. there's decent gear for it. There's the offhands from Corrupted Gardens that boost it. I think Dodge mm -hmm. Gull also boosts it. But yeah, overall, I would just not use it after it's also level 100. A skill. It is definitely I, I wouldn't use yeah. it after level 60. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I have everything maxed, then I'll just hot swap points and do it just for more yeah. damage. Yeah. Could Probably a point dump skill. Yeah, point. Good. It, but it does cost a lot of mana or energy, mm -hmm. which is not mm -hmm. a point dump skill. Not to, it'll do the same job at level 20 as it does at level 50. And, that and it's really slow job, compared to... Yeah, that usual job is canceling auto attacks. Yeah. Um, next up uh, comes Rupture. That's the skill I was going to tell you to drop Giant Swing for. Because Rupture, yeah, Rupture. Rupture is basically... Rupture is basically a bit more damage than Giant Swing gives, and it also gives you damage over time. Yeah. It gives it yeah. a lot. It's, it's not as fast as... In the game. It's not... In... It's not fast like Rend. It's pretty much just the same speed, but it does do a lot more damage than Rend. Oh yeah, this thing. In, in terms of just mm -hmm. numbers, in terms of speed, Rend is still better. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely this. Whether you're PvP warrior, DPS, or hell, you're even using this level one as a tank. You have enough time in your rotation as a t tank to not to cast this. No reason not to. Um, really good skill, in general. Uh, double attack. Universally good if you have. You know, the higher your damage number is, the better double attack gets, so... Yeah, any martial melee class wants to run this skill in general. It's mm -hmm. guaranteed mm -hmm. auto attacks. If yep. you're at a point where you don't want to run this, like, it's when you have, like, 20k attack, when you're already hitting 98% of your auto attacks, and you're at max attack speed anyway, so that would mm -hmm. be probably the only time I'd ever not run that skill. Uh, the Shatter. Shatter, probably the most important skill for endgame. So good. Lowers, yeah. lowers the armor of the boss, I think, for 8 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10. You get a mix of a Phoenix skill and the Shatter, it's going to reduce the armor crazy. You could, as I said, you could fit two pummels in there, a rupture and a double attack. And if you have another warrior cycling with you, Constantly, like, going from him to you, cycling in between shatters, that's just a crazy amount of damage output you're getting for you, that warrior, and the rest of the clan. 
Shatter is one of those abilities that you need to be coordinating with the other warriors at raids to make sure that mm -hmm. the skill is always up. Um, one you don't even need to talk to him. You don't even need to talk to him saying when you're going to shatter. Just, just look attention. at the icon bar. Yeah, just look at the yep. icon bar. Yeah, even in PvP, this ability is great. Mm -hmm. and Lixing, it's not as good, but it's still definitely useful. Mm -hmm. um, so after shatter, we have shield wall. For tanking, uh, tank saves your life. Yeah, hundred percent. This is busted. Skill. I couldn't so count the amount of times I'm trying to tank like freaking South Root on Bloodthorn or just any kind of EDL boss or prot, and there was a cooldown on the Druid's Nature's Touch or Nature's Breath, and I'm like just about to die, and then that and then it just pops up ready to use five thousand one hundred damage block for me. It scales off of it. I block 5k, he gets to heal me, saves your life. Absolutely. Um, this is another reason, uh, skills like that are another reason why warriors want to go into uh, vitality as a secondary ability. Because skills like defensive formation, they can cast on their party, even if it's level 1. Shield wall on themselves to maybe stop that Geli AoE from killing you. It can be mm -hmm. useful all the time. Uh, sweeping blow. Pretty useless. Never used it before. I've seen people it, mix with it. Okay. It's a good to add, to do it's good to drag mobs towards you if you don't want it going on your duo partner. It doesn't really do that much damage. Yeah. I never did the quest to do it. I was too confusing. Yeah, it's not the most best or it's not the best skill ever. Uh frenzy. Mm. You have Very to good for DPS. Yeah. Almost guaranteed you need to use that thing if you want to be good DPS. Yep. Yeah, DPS Boost your attack by crap ton. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's like a must run skill just for those classes. Enduring Guard. Yeah, it's almost like a haste. Enduring Guard, I believe, is a skill you can't really get anymore. You can. It's the other it... uh, quests, or book quest skill. It's the counter oh, I've never used defensive it. formation. Instead of defending against auto attacks, it boosts your evasions, I think. Yeah. It's your skill for So it's pretty much like Bless. It's pretty much like Bless. Yeah. From Drills. Oh. I don't know how good that is. I never used it. Yeah, I never used it either. Um, I'm so. not using it on this build, but if you have the skill points and enough like hot swap points to put some points into it, I would. But if you're don't have points, like extra, a couple extra points laying around. This is the first skill you drop as a warrior. Mostly with bosses, it's more about blocking auto attacks and reducing just general auto attacks. But this is kind of just only against skills, which isn't going to be too relevant at boss fights. Mm -hmm. It could definitely help against like one shot mm -hmm. skills, you know. But then yeah. again, mm -hmm. not the greatest. That's why I got druids to use boss. Yep. Mm -hmm. Number well, one skill you again. got. It's like one of the top three you need to use as a tank. Yeah. Protect yep, top for tank. Yeah. Yeah, this just makes up one of the bread and butter skills of a tank. Mm -hmm. Yep, gets the boss onto you and away from the DPS. Kind of like Warcry, but it doesn't uh, take like everybody. It just takes one guy. Yeah, so. you basically just shout curse words at an enemy. Uh, you yep. can get a yep. similar effect with the taunting ring dropped by Bloodthorn adds. Except instead of curse words, he just uh, says slightly mean comments. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Warcry. I use that as a point dump after Shield Wall, since I it's at like 35 right now. It's generally good enough to still maintain aggro from the boss you're trying to tank. I keep. Mm -hmm. I don't. Down. I keep it level one with a hot swap ring for it. Yeah, I have enough hot swaps so I can max it out. So. Yeah. So it really depends what you need it. If you're doing like ad tankings that like, prop which you could see us doing here, um, definitely uh, want to get Warcry up a little bit more. But it's it's like a second taunt. Yeah. Usually taunt yep. is enough if you're max, but it really depends on. How many ads? Like, if you're in Mord Pit, fighting Gale, or Mord Dress, definitely very useful because there's a lot of ads in that pit. And when Morty yeah. calls mm -hmm. for help, he calls the entire room. 
So, it's good for bosses like those. Other stuff like Geli, not so much. Bloodthorn, again, not good. Not that great. So. Pro adds, I love it for. So. Yeah, most definitely. Um, other than that, I think that's every ability. Oh, defensive formation and Enduring Guard. We'll cover those together. We already did Enduring Guard, I think. Uh, not yet. Or not de de protective stance, I mean. Protective stance and defensive formation. Though must-haves for tanks. Protective stance lowers damage overall. Mm -hmm. Defensive formation lowers the amount of times you can get hit from auto attacks. Yeah. One, uh, yeah, defensive formation uh, gives defense. The other one gives giving armor. Mm -hmm. Defensive formation it can be cast on all party members. It's self-explanatory. It's just a must-have for tanks. Yeah. So, those are two, the other two bread-and-butter skills for tanking. So... Okay. So, what are... Generally, for tanking, what kind of gear are we looking for a lot of the times? From Blood Thorn, you're looking for... defense. Yeah, th those are prod braces. Dex, Vit, and Defense. The yeah. Azure Shields or Azure Cores. The core mm -hmm. is a little bit more dex heavy than Vit, but it's only by like a couple of points. Bloodthorn, you're looking for shielding Ami and Misks. Those are the yep. ones that give Vit, dex, and defense with a little bit of armor and resists. For rings, I also recommend either shielding rings, shield wall cooldown rings, or if you're trying to get cheap but pretty much as good, get the highest level rich lich rings you can. Uh, two, two or four. three, sh yeah, like two or three field, would be fun. I'm using a necro shield wall brace. Yes, those are also pretty good if you have the slots to swap in between a brace and a ring. I main tank. I just main mm -hmm. stay this thing. It's yeah. Um, if you can get a godly shield wall cooldown, you'll thank yourself. Oh yeah, that it's forty percent. Yeah, 40% less damage is how I think of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just getting that up more often. It's kind of busted. Um, so for as a tank, what ideally, what are the health and defense thresholds we want to be hitting at bo bosses fully licked? Uh, beginner tanks can hit anywhere from 20k to 25k HP. And around like 6 to 8k defense on buffed, they get like anywhere from... 8 to 10 buff. Hmm. More mid, like middle and end game, whenever you get like the more Bloodthorn gear, the more shadow weapons and all the Bloodthorn helmets, easily 10k plus, and you're starting to break that border of 30k of HP. Yep. Uh, generally a good numbers two for intermediate tanks. Look for 20k HP, maybe roughly 10k defense. A good test you can see about your build is come to Proteus. He's located right here in the Arcane Sanctum. And just pull all of the ads and see if you can hold them on the Lix or not. I currently don't have a Lix popped and, you know, I'm maintaining my own here. Is... If you can use an armor, defense, and HP Lix and survive, you're pretty much fine. Yeah, that's what you really want to aim for. Uh, Corrupted Garden Shield is really important, but mm -hmm. if you don't have that, the Runic Shield of Fortitude is probably the next best go-to. Yeah. Now, there, there is... Are... Oh, sorry. There are also Mord Helms, if you can't find Bloodthorn Helms. I recommend either of the Knight's Helmets. So there's a Knight's with a K-N-I-G-H-T-S, or Knight, how you spell, like, Nighty Sky. N-I-G-H. Mm -hmm. They sound the same, but they have yeah. a little bit of stats. One gives energy, one. and one gives dex. Yep. And so, and Husky, why is it that we go hmm. with the Runic Shield of Fortitude instead of the other shield from the shop, from the 200 luck shop? Um, it's just, it's better overall with the stats to help tank, so, but I would for sure go for, um, the CG shield if you can, it's just the best. And it also improves, if you get a Geliax off of them, improves the damage on your Geliax, too. Mm -hmm. 
the reason you also get the runic fortitude shield is because the vit that it gives it's that also boosts resistances too. it's dependent sometimes resistances are more important but the vit that get the vit that you get from the shield boosts your other skills like trot stance and defensive formation yeah mm. and shield wall i never bought it i just use edl until i can get cg <laughs> yeah so oh. spend a little bit talking about the um what touch gold pieces do we want boots For tanks boots they give and... defense Sometimes I also see really, really good tanks using pants. Gotcha. If they can spare the armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very expensive, though, for some plants to do, and this is only if you're running absolute min-max. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Really depends, because the clan would way rather have mages or druids or something running that Dutch call that the tank has on. Yeah. So, when EDL is just pretty close to what Dutch call will give. Um, also, one skill I do want to quickly mention for a lot of tanks that you guys are going to want to get down early is your positional awareness in a lot of fights. Uh, good thing this would include stuff like aggro ranges, the vicinity of where you're holding bosses and relative to ads, knowing the different call for help ranges of bosses. Um, yep. It would also help trying to time the boss's skills with your shield wall so you take absolutely no damage yep and one thing you can definitely do with that a lot of bosses are telegraphing their skills by mm -hmm. in chat that like you will see yes. something appear in chat and so most of the time in raids uh for your chat settings you're going to want to have stuff like your show general and criticals turned off this will keep your chat clear um if your clan does do rolls for drops uh make sure to turn general back on after the uh, uh, boss dies because rolls get turned off by general chat. Mm -hmm. So for the DPS warrior, um, the big strength as we covered earlier is that most endgame bosses have less slashing bl and bludgeoning resistance than pierce resistance. So as long as you're running lures, this can actually make the DPS build viable. So um, and all these different skills go off strength and a couple go off of the vitality. That's what it was. So, and specifically for what I want to cover is the differences between the sword, axe, hammer, and spear for DPS. And sword? So mm -hmm. On Krom here, sword is easier to get gear for since there's only like a couple of people. Yeah. Axe generally has the most competition since there's Gelbron gear for it. Mm -hmm. And no one really uses blunt stuff because we don't kill the Othu that much. Yeah. And there's not really that much gear for it either. So generally, Axe is used more. Sword is also. Sword is the speedier option. It has slower attack speed. I mean, faster, but yeah. a lower number. Um, yeah, it's basically a slightly worse Axe because it does less damage. But as mm -hmm. long as you have your Corrupted Gardens offhand, you can still cast your Rupture skill. Which yeah. is mm -hmm. key for the sword that's, build. Yeah. That's the big takeaway about using a sword under endgame. Mm -hmm. Or like, either early or mid-game, you just can't have that extra skill, and Rupture is a very, very good skill. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as for axes, what is the main... Why are axes so good and so sought after? Well, Gelebron drops an axe and Dino drops an axe. The reason they are so sought after is because they also give elemental damage, and if you are smart for DPS warriors, you would get the Solar Flames, which gives strength and attack. Mm -hmm. And it lets you. And use then the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, and then the Cast Castile Miter, however you pronounce it. That one gives defense. And then the. Lunar Frost the, is like the I, Yeah, Lunar Frost is the middle one, which is. More of the vitality one, but so the tanks will look it. after the the might one, and the DPS will look after whatever the yeah. And DPS especially one is. when you're running an axe, this allows you to have a little bit more utility because that opens up your offhand to use a shield, so you can also shield bash bosses. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
can yeah. still be full damage. Um, about the hammer. The only real hammer weapon that you get is either from the towers, since you don't really have access to endgame raid gear, or from Dino, which is completely broken because it does more damage than Geli. It gives, instead of attack, it gives the actual weapon's ability. And the skill does a lot more damage, reduces evasions, and it's instant cast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So yeah, with the hammer, this does limit you to also needing to use the Corrupted Gardens offhand. So you're losing out on the Shield Bash utility potential. But Dino Hammer is just broken. So uh -huh. just use it if you can in that case. That's the only reason why it's viable. Other than that, don't bother using hammer. And then for spear. Uh... There's a little bit uh, of gear for spear on Krom. Generally, quick attack speed. Yeah, quick attack um, speed. Pretty high damage since Morty spears give a lot of pierce if you get a void. As well as mm. elemental damage. Mm, only downside is that you still can't use rupture with it, and it just yeah. it's just a little bit lower tier. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also, there's not really that much. I would say gear it is the, the go-to if your clan is not running. The off lures of slash or bludgeoning. So if you're yeah. only running pierce, then mm -hmm. spear will be your best option. Yep. So, and board spears also for are really good when you, especially when you can't kill stuff like dino and gully. So go after that if mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. um, also, now this would go nicely into the PvP build. And how do we set up PvP builds? That's... I'm gonna leave that to Husky, I don't PvP. Um, so for the stats, I go full of it. And then my skill, all my skill points are going to DPS stuff. So I can take a lot of hits and I can do a crazy amount of damage at the same time. Now with PvP, do you use your tanking gear or your damage gear? I use my damage gear. So, the go-to, if you want to be a warrior that destroys everybody, it'd be full reaver stuff, full vit, and all your skills into DPS stuff. So, mm. Reaver gear is full PvP stuff. It's broken for PvP. <laughs> um, and what kind of skills do we want to be running as a uh, PvP warrior? So, for the skills that uh, I don't put points in, but I still run them, just to get the extra, like, buffness, I'll just put defensive formation and pro stands. But the main thing, I just put into all the DPS skills, like Shatter. So, I use first I do a Shield Bash them, so that they can't do anything. And then I use Shatter in my Phoenix skill, so I reduce their armor down to nothing. And then I use all the DPS skills, like Pummel, Double Attack, Rupture, Giant Swing, and... Just all the DPS skills, which will usually end up almost killing them or killing them. Hmm. Yeah, as a rogue. So I don't know a rogue. By giant swing too many times. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. If I use Shatter and Phoenix skill when you're bashed, I get, the skill would probably almost one tap somebody, hmm. especially a rogue, because they're more on the low vitality side. Yeah. Oh. So, as for mounts, what would be the best option for mounts? Uh, for sure bear, because I would say the main uh, warriors will go into the tanking side, which the extra, the resist and the vit that the bear gets the skill is almost like another shield wall. So it will block um, a certain amount of damage for a certain amount of time. I think my spirit bear with like nothing... Like, no bear riding skills. It blocks, like, 3,000 damage. So, mm -hmm. that's almost like another shield wall. It's a little bit lower. So. Oh, but, okay. and then if you want to go go DPS, it would be, um, I know you guys are going to rant about the hell steed, but I feel like that's the what I see a lot of DPS. We already went over that shit. 
Okay. Bird. <laughs> um, and I have seen some hell steeds, but I definitely think that those are a waste of gold. And Don't act like we haven't already went over this. Is that? <laughs> We're recording. It's some bullshit. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of times with hell seeds, I, was, I hate them. I bought one. It was a big mistake. Um, the AOE on the hell seed is way bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, it's dog water. <laughs> it literally ends up just pulling way too many ads. And yeah, it's just a pain. So don't ever use it. Plus, it only gives like a hundred strength of it. So. Yeah, it's nowhere near as good as the bear. But as for pets, what do we ideally want to run? Uh, Phoenix, pig, um. Boar is also good for tanking. Yeah. Phoenix, pig, reindeer would be pretty much broken if it could be bearded. Um. What else? Bunny can be good. Is the crazy amount of energy. Um, mm -hmm. What else is there? The Soulbound Imp, I've never ever used it, but the stats look kind of good on it. I mean, it's a shield and dex and vitality, but I've never used it, so can't say anything about it. Dragons are better for the DPS warriors. They're not as good sure. as the Phoenix, though. I think the Phoenix takes the cake as the best all around pet. And the reindeer mm -hmm. takes the cake as the best uh, tanking pet. But if you can't afford those, because those are two luxury pets, uh, the pig and the bunny are definitely no not slacking at all. And they will save your life a lot. Mm -hmm. um, as for must-have tank gear that we want to be targeting, uh, or just general, not even just with... Uh, must have for tanks any warrior gear in general like what would those be because we do have the lich rings which are must have for tanks which give just straight vitality defense and all of your evasions which is one reason why we don't go with the second shop shield because they already these give your evasions give you evasions like the it's good in the it's good for beginner tanks and end game hmm. usually definitely want to find shieldings yeah the fortitude rings definitely get traded out eventually for full bloodthorn rings but those are mm -hmm. far take far time oh. um dodge galls definitely a must have for tank or not tanks but dps as the entire class kind of dps or revolves around it. Um, what else is there for good weapons that we want to look for? Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah, a dinosaur like, sword is also really, really good. Yeah. Dino sword is I mean, good. like we talked about the dino hammer. Yeah. Those are the most broken. Yeah. Anything yeah. Sure. Uh, Kelly Axe and the Lord Spears are the two others that. I would go for mm -hmm. and then just general for tanking go for anything shield wall cooldown related or for dps any pummel gear really so that's a basic summary of that and anyway mm -hmm. i think that would wrap up today's video um i guess see you all next time and have mm -hmm. a good day